the Q3 earnings call? A lot of people, okay, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later with, uh, with Warren. Um, but one of the things that the Tesla team said on the call was talking about their next generation platform. Uh, and they talked, they, they, they stated on the earnings call that they were working towards a platform that was essentially half the cost of the Model 3 platform. <laughs> Uh, now, they didn't say what they were going to charge people for it, but they said cost-wise, it was hard to just, Do you see anything that's going to stop them achieving that goal? No. <laughs> can I say, what can I say? I've taken a part of Model 3. I know, I know where you can take a lot of cost out. I know where you can take a lot of weight out. I know what you can do from a, from a battery standpoint. Okay, it's not going to be a rocket ship like uh, like the rest of the Tesla vehicles, but you know what? It's going to get somebody from here to there. And that $24,000 vehicle is, is, is yes, possible. 100% possible. So Tesla arguably has had a big advantage over the legacy automakers in that they are still building brand new factories um, and can get them out exactly as they want. Now, as they, as they move to things like the Giga Casting, clearly if they're already in a manufacturing uh, phase, they've got replacement costs to do that. Now, they've got a very big balance sheet, but from what you've seen, I, I saw you at, at Giga Texas, um, how big of a change are they going to have to make in the factories themselves to be able to drive these cost reductions? Are they going to be throwing away hydro presses? Or what are they? Uh, for, so you, you meant battery, you, you said battery, but Sorry, I'm okay. sure you meant the car. Yeah, the car. But the battery is going to be a change as well. It's going to be at least LFP, uh, lithium iron phosphate. These batteries um, don't have, so they have the same amount of energy, but they don't have the same amount of power. So they can't discharge as quickly as what your 2170s or your 4680s can do. Okay, they, they, they discharge at a different rate. but. Most people don't drive like like a maniac. I, I drive quick, but uh, but most people don't drive like I drive. Most people want to get from point A to point B alive. And that's strange as it may seem. So, anyways, the the deal is, if I have LFP, um, I will have the same as what it would be like driving a, a normal ICE vehicle. And uh, and it might be a little quicker if you have a sport mode or something like that on. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be uh, a Model Y, a Model 3, and certainly not an S. But it's going to get people from here to there, and it's going to be safe. And I'm only guessing, but my guess is that uh, um, that uh, the, uh, the, the, the lower part of the body will be probably two castings. It'll be a front and a rear that'll be joined somewhere on, on the longitudinals. And, uh, and the reason that I'm guessing that is because there's a 9,000 ton uh, uh, molding machine and it's, uh, it's destined for somewhere in North America. It's being built right now. I, was, I, I looked at it or looked at the bits and pieces. So, um, and, and nobody at Hydra or uh, the, uh, uh, what's the name of the, forgotten the name of the tooling company, but anyway, uh, and neither one of them wanted to talk about what they were working on next. But they had gigantic shoes. The, the thing that uh, the mold fits on, it's called a shoe. Gigantic shoes sitting there, and I, uh, this doesn't take a rocket science to figure out. I mean, this could be uber inexpensive. So when you look at this, those big castings, they have a bigger piece cost, slightly more piece cost. However, their total accounting cost drops like a rock. And you get the added benefit of when you have those castings, uh, I don't wanna, okay, so you're not an engineer, so I'm gonna try and, and, and put this across. Uh, if you have a casting normally, uh, using pretty much any, any kind of technique, what winds up happening is you get induced stresses. It's because the molten material moves in and it's moving in fairly slowly. And as it's moving, it's cooling in some places and it's still hot in others. And that gives you induced stresses, among other things, hydrogen built brittle and all kinds of other stuff. And if you machine it or if you shake it, then all of a sudden you get movement. If you have stampings, you stamp it, you put it on a gauge, it looks fine. 
You put it in a box, you ship it away, it gets welded up, and now it's not fun. It, because induced stress, it, it wants to relax. It wants to move to a new, a new location. Well, the castings that Elon Musk has got, well, let me ask you a question. You, you've probably seen pictures of the gigantic castings. How long do you think it takes to fill the mold? In the blink of an eye, that's pretty good. It's less than one second, okay? Less than a second to throw 120 pounds into molten material into a mold. What does that do? Well, the material is moving so fast that there is no induced stress. It sits there for about 20 or 30 seconds, then the mold opens, and guess what? When that thing falls down, it will never move, never. It's rock solid, it will never move. So you take that and you put it into a car. What does that do for you? Well, the doors are always going to be in the right place. The hood and the deck lid will, will uh, sorry, yeah, the hood, the deck lid, the hatch, whatever you've got, it's going to be, it'll be open and closed perfectly. I get five good holes. That's what I really look for in a car, five good holes. And that is exactly what will what get you to the $24,000 car because there'll be no online re rework. Every part will fit one to the other, and the faster they get to the that type of a product, the more likelihood we're all going to be um, happy campers with a twenty-four thousand dollar vehicle that'll kick the daylights uh, from a quality and safety uh, aspect, kick the daylights out of um, out of things that are going to be probably twice the price. Well, let's talk about Tesla's next car. When I was speaking earlier, uh, we had a show of hands, and most of the room had Cybertrucks uh, reserved. So, you know, the, the very unique process is what Tesla is promising to build this thing. You've talked on your channel about how much money not having a paint shot for the body will save. Kind of, can you kind of give your just overarching perspective on the Cybertruck from a cost perspective and and what that's gonna allow Tesla to do relative to the competition in the, the pickup EV pickup truck market. Okay, so uh, first off, I don't really look at the Cybertruck as a pickup truck. Um, okay, the Lightning, boom, that is, there's no question about it. But the Rivian is like some kind of a sport truck. It's, it's not the truck I'd want to, for my factory. And I think that the Cybertruck is gonna be built for somebody like myself, that's an outdoors person, that, that wants to go hunting, that wants to use that truck um, as their daily ride as well. They want something rugged and big. And I, I don't see it as a, I don't see that truck being picked up by construction workers and things like that. I, I just don't, it doesn't make any sense. To me, that truck will kick the daylights out of a market that we don't even have right now. And that's a fact, it's got its own unique market. And any car that can come out and have its own unique market will basically dominate it forever, if they, unless they do something stupid. Uh, I think that Tesla is gonna make a shitload of money on that car. Uh, I, or truck, I should say. I think that um, uh, it's an exoskeleton, I've been trying to talk. So, I for 15 years, I had a cast frame sitting on my floor and I tried to talk other OEMs from Europe, from Japan, from China, and uh, and from obviously North America into. Nobody went for it. Nah, you can't do that. Nah, that won't work. Nah, nah, we've got big stamping machines. Uh, 15 years and nobody, nobody picked up on it. And then Tesla, I criticized them. I said, you got 120 parts, there should be one. And the next thing you know, they got <laughs> they made the change. Uh, how how they, how they do things and how everybody else does them, there's no comparison. So I think that the Cybertruck, when it comes out, it's going to have the big castings, just like uh, just like the other guys have got. Uh, the, the Model Y has got right now. Um, and I believe that the Model 3 eventually will go in the same direction. They'll, they'll get rid of the stamping lines that they've got. They'll sell them to the big three or somebody like that. And, uh, and they'll have a lot more space. And if anything, the Fremont plant needs is more space. Uh, so by getting rid of those old stamping products and whatnot, that will help out. The, uh, the cyber truck is gonna make them a tremendous amount of more money. And uh, that thing you just saw, that Altman Z-score, 
they're going to be uh, they're going to have another trail that's going to go into infinity uh, as to how much they're worth and uh, and.